the brand new book. Election. Today is Tuesday, August 6th, 2024. Now, the news with Gary Libertor and meteorologist Eric Gage. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us here on this Tuesday. I'm Gary Libertor. And I'm Storm Tracker 2, meteorologist Eric Gage. And some spots saw some, uh, you know, heavy, heavy winds last night. Heavy winds, heavy rainfall, a bit busy in some spots yesterday. Things have quieted down this morning. And we're still tracking an unsettled day, but the severe weather risk is over. So we're not looking at any more strong storms for now. Uh, but let's take a closer look at that radar. We can see here, again, we're not completely dry. We're looking at uh, mainly a shower south in Madison County. This line is moving eastward into the Route 8 region in uh, the Bridgewater area momentarily. And then out in western New York, still some lingering spotty rain. Now, following that, will actually dry out a little bit. Now, as you can see here, mainly cloudy skies right now, temperatures in the 60s, and the humidity still sticking around. However, this will not be the case as we head into this evening and tonight. That cold front we mentioned moving a little bit slower than expected. Uh, but still, that low humidity will move in tonight and into tomorrow. But for the next 12 hours, it's looking rather unsettled. Well, we got clouds to start. They'll be a little bit persistent for the late morning and early afternoon. And then those clouds turn to rain showers yet again by this evening and tonight. And then we'll see a brief window of dry weather before we are tracking the remnants of Tropical Storm Debbie and how they impact our area in that forecast straight ahead. Gary? Eric, thanks. Parts of Madison County took the brunt of the damage from the storm last night. These pictures are from the village of Hamilton. Multiple reports of trees down around the village, including on the campus of Colgate University. And in Sequoia, Pinnacle Road was closed for a time last night after a lightning struck strike hit the railroad crossing, causing it to short out and close, blocking that busy roadway. Crossing was quickly fixed right around 10 o'clock last night, and the road was reopened. A Rome business is celebrating 40 years in business by giving back. Chris Tech donated $5,000 and two refrigerators to the Salvation Army of Rome. The company is also collecting food and clothing for victims of last month's tornado. They can be dropped off at the company's headquarters, and that's at 80 Otis Drive in the Griffiths Industrial Business Park until August 9th. A Rome man is accused of running around. The WKTV Tower Cam is brought to you by the Central Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Good morning and welcome back. The time now is 5:11. We're getting you to set up. Set to head out the door this morning on the Munson commute cast. And first off, let's take a live look at traffic flow early this morning. Thankfully, we have no accidents to report of again as of early this morning. There does appear to be a road closure outside of our area out in Fulton County, but again, here locally, uh, we do have uh, nothing to report early today. Uh, there were flooding advisories and flash flood warnings in effect overnight, especially for some locations just south of the Utica area, the Sequoia region. I know last night there was lots of ponding on roadways. Uh, and earlier on with that severe weather, there was reports of damage in Madison County and other spots as well. Uh, but things are quieting down right now. There will still be lingering showers today, but those of you who are concerned of severe weather, we're not tracking any more of that today. These rain showers that do arrive later today will only be rain, no winds, maybe concerns for additional ponding on roadways yet again, but uh, the main concern is, is pretty much over. Gary? Eric, thanks. In Paris, they weren't all from Central New York's most dependable weather team, here's meteorologist Eric Gage. Good morning. Welcome back. A busy evening in the weather department yesterday, but things are quieting down early this morning. A live look at downtown Utica right now. Uh, still roads a bit damp. There are still persistent clouds. And what we'll be expecting today is something similar to this this morning for most of this uh, morning and after, early afternoon. 
and then rain showers continuing to arrive. One thing, though, it's still very humid out. This pesky cold front has been wobbling back and forth, shifted north. It's going to shift south. However, it's moving slower than expected. So today will still be mainly on the humid side, but again, that pushes through, and then we'll be talking about that low humidity for the next few days. It's currently in the upper 60s right now, but it's not warming up by much today. We're lucky to reach the low to mid 70s by this afternoon. And the radar right now, you can see mainly quiet, but there are a few rain bands firing up. In fact, this one heading right into the Bridgewater area at this point, and a few more spotty showers just west of Oswego in western New York near Rochester. So, again, today, Humid, muggy weather, but then the humidity drops. Wednesday and Thursday returns again as we head into Friday. And the reason why is because of what we left of Tropical Storm Debbie. So here's where Tropical Storm Debbie is right now. Currently in Georgia, heading into the South Carolina coast, heading out to the coast and remaining not strong, but still persistent dropping a bunch of rainfall along the coast and then going back inland and then shifting north. And then this, of course, could produce some rain showers here locally, making the second half of the week a bit more unsettled. And so in our skycast this morning, you can see here clouds to start a few spotty showers. Better shot for rain this afternoon and this evening. Again, we're not tracking anything in terms of severe weather. This will only bring rain and you can see temperatures even at 5 p.m. only in the upper 60s. I feel a lot more cool compared to the uh, usual evening temps we've seen over the past week. That rain shifts south and east and then that front remains stationary mainly south of our area. It'll be a cloudy start south but sunny start north and then as the day moves on dry for the entire area by the afternoon and early evening. So a great day tomorrow. Uh, but then as we head into Thursday, uh, as we get more high-resolution models coming, we can actually see uh, the rain, the leading edge of the remnants of Tropical Storm uh, Debbie moving through. And we'll see those rain showers by the very earliest by the mid-afternoon on Thursday. And so your seven-day forecast, we got a beautiful day Wednesday, but again, with what's left of Debbie, this is going to produce some unsettled conditions heading into Thursday evening, then Friday, Saturday, and still a little bit in Sunday. So uh, enjoy the dry weather tomorrow because we'll be in an unsettled rainy pattern moving forward. Gary? That Debbie. That Debbie. Yeah, a lot <laughs> of rain coming. Lots of rain. Eric, thanks. The time right now is 521. Still now, the news with Gary Libertor and meteorologist Eric Gage. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this half hour. I'm Gary Libertor. And I'm Storm Tracker 2, meteorologist Eric Gage. And boy, those storms moved in last night. Those winds were something else. Very, very strong. Thankfully, no confirmed tornadoes here locally, but out in Buffalo. Really? EF1 oh my. tornado yesterday. Just, you know, a casual downtown EF1 tornado in Buffalo. Uh, something you don't see too often. Yeah. And something to mention, too. We, we mentioned in July it was a record setting month of tornadoes. Now a record setting year. We had one surprisingly in February, one in June, that West Winfield tornado, and then EF1 in August. That brings to 26 wow. this month. A very active month of weather. But as you look ahead to today, thankfully, nothing in terms of severe weather is expected. We got a few spotty showers on the Yorkville Battery Storm Tracker 2 live radar, uh, but most of the area is starting out dry but cloudy. But as we turn our attention to the next few hours, we'll see a few more spotty showers roll through and then a better shot for rain later today. Currently in the upper 60s early this morning, but we're not going to warm, warm up by much as the uh, clouds remain persistent and temperatures struggle to reach the low to mid 70s. So a somewhat cooler than average day, at least for all early August standards, uh, with rain showers moving in. Again, nothing expected to be severe. We'll talk about the rainfall plus what's left of Tropical Storm Debbie and if that will impact us here locally heading into the end of the week in that forecast straight ahead.
Gary. Eric, thanks. Well, Debbie did reach Florida's Big Bend Monday Category 1 hurricane. It has since been downgraded to a tropical storm, as Eric just mentioned, but is expected to cause a lot more damage with flooding, as forecasters have warned the storm could dump historic levels of rain on southern states. Reporter Christian Colon has more now from northern Florida. Hurricane Debbie made its way throughout the west coast and northern Florida, dumping several inches of rain. A lot of trees down, a lot of debris, just a lot of flooding. The flooding, I think, is the worst part of it all. Low-lying homes and businesses now surrounded by water, like this boutique in Live Oak. Well, we've had close to 10, 12 inches of rain since last night, and uh, it comes out through the parking lot in the back back there, and then it comes down up underneath the, through the sewer part down through there. The wind forced trees to come down and crush power lines. Some lost power. Because they're so used to the AC and can't open the fridge, can't get into the food or anything. So you're, you got lucky and Waffle House was open. So we was able to go there to get something to eat. Emergency crews from Miami-Dade seen heading north to help out. Nearly 50 Miami-Dade fire rescue personnel brought boats and trucks reporting for duty to an area still recovering from last year's Hurricane Idalia. Idalia had more wind and came through fast, and this is just sitting on top of us, just dumping rain after, you know, sheets after sheets. And the storm has been deadly. Four people were killed, including a 13-year-old who died when a tree crushed his mobile home. In Live Oak, Christian Colon, NBC News. Five local companies have products vying for the title Good morning. Welcome back, everyone. This Tuesday, we're starting out with our photo of the day, and this one is a great photo submitted to us in Hartwick of a sunflower field. Now, me personally, I haven't seen that many sunflower fields like last year. There were so many on my drives down to Oneonta. Uh, fields covered them. They're absolutely beautiful. Uh, and this one, just the case right there. Uh, you can see, of course, the uh, very colorful backdrop in the sky. If you like to submit a photo like this one, showcasing the beauty of our local area here in central New York, send a link right there on top of your screen, wktv.com slash weather slash pics. Well, this morning, temperatures starting out rather mild in the 60s, currently sitting at 69 degrees in Whitesboro, 68 little falls. A little cooler, 68 in Inlet, and we're not warming up by much with highs only in the 70s. Uh, but again, we're tracking the arrival of a few scattered showers this afternoon and this evening. Uh, but then a pretty nice day tomorrow. But we'll also keep an eye on what's left of Tropical Storm Debbie in that forecast straight ahead. Gary? Eric, thanks. Well, if you are someone who is into or wants. The WKTV Tower Cam is brought to you by the Central Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. From Central New York's most dependable weather team, here's meteorologist Eric Gage. Good morning and welcome back. The time now is 547 and we're starting out this morning uh, quiet after an, a busy day yesterday. Matter of fact, it was a very busy day out in Buffalo where a, an EF1 tornado ripped through the city. And to give you some background information on that tornado, uh, it was again confirmed near Niagara Street and Carolina Street uh, in the Erie County area. And again, it was confirmed as an EF1. And just look at the damage here. Uh, you can see, of course, trees falling down on cars. You can see uh, debris out in the sidewalks. I'm not sure if the video will get to it, but we did uh, see a car flipped over which also indicates extremely strong winds. There's a car right there. So again, it was a very busy day of weather, uh, especially in western New York. Even yesterday here locally, there were reports of wind damage as well as some flooding. You can see here some locations isolated in this just south of the Mohawk Valley and into the Mohawk Valley uh, of rainfall totals exceeding over an inch and a half, near two inches of rainfall. Uh, and uh, even yesterday, ponding on roadways near the Sequoia area and, of course, heading down into the southern Herkimer County region. So that's the rainfall total so far from the Mesonet network. Uh, but for now, we're not tracking any more flooding as things are quieting down. Very humid conditions 
and temperatures in the 60s. We mentioned yesterday that the humidity will drop today. It's looking more so like this evening and tonight with a better shot for low humidity tomorrow as this cold front is just struggling to push south right now. It's battling a lot of very strong south winds. Uh, is this is turning into more so a stationary front at this point. As you can see here, a few spotty showers, mainly dry in the Yorkville Battery Storm Tracker 2 live radar. But uh, following that, again, we'll see lower humidity tomorrow and Thursday. However, it returns again on Friday. So enjoy this short stretch of early taste of fall. I think it's too early to say that, but uh, at least humidity-wise, an early taste of fall. But I mentioned on Friday, humidity returning. This is all due to what's left of Tropical Storm Debbie. It will be a tropical depression at that point, a post-tropical depression, as it continues to shift northward. And you can see it kind of stays around the South Carolina coast and then hooks back inland. And this will collide with a trough moving through the area. And what that'll do is it'll produce not so much in terms of a rotating broad area of low pressure bringing rain showers, more so just uh, steady rain here and there heading into Friday and potentially the weekend. But for now, we'll stay to the uh, near term. And we're talking about rain showers arriving this afternoon and this evening. A little bit on the damp side. Temperatures not warming up by much, only into the upper 60s to low 70s. Then following tonight and early tomorrow, that stationary front sets up south. A cloudy start south, a sunny start north. Then most of us will see sun by the afternoon. Uh, but then as we head into the evening, again looking quiet and dry, a return to rain showers arrive at the very earliest Thursday afternoon. That's when we can start to see the moisture from Debbie move its way north into central New York. But again, we're not tracking hurricane force winds or conditions. This will only bring with it the moisture part of it, which will be the rain showers. So as you can see here, a beautiful day tomorrow, but then we got this unsettled pattern we're going to move right back into. And this will continue likely into the start and middle of the weekend and continuing on until Sunday and Monday. So we got a damp stretch ahead, but tomorrow Gary's looking pretty nice. We'll take it. Yes. <laughs> Eric, thanks. Well, a cotton candy colored crustacean. 2024. Now, the news with Gary Libertor and meteorologist Eric Gage. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us on this Tuesday. I'm Gary Libertor. And I'm Storm Tracker 2 meteorologist Eric Gage. And boy, you pulled up some video from uh, Buffalo. Pretty intense out there. Yes, an EF1 tornado yesterday running right through pretty much the downtown area, wow. right off the shores of Lake Erie, and just Look at this damage. Tree falling on this car here. Uh, I'm not sure we'll get to it. Maybe we will. You can see the damage here as well. And also a flipped car. Uh, so there are pretty strong winds up near 90 miles per hour yesterday. Uh, and I think we can show it just in a second or so. I think it's right after this clip right here. There it is. <laughs> you snapped your fingers and there it was. Look at that flipped car. Yeah. Uh, now, thankfully here locally, to show in just a few, a few seconds, uh, the damage here not too significant, but still mm -hmm. uh, a pretty active evening yesterday. But let's take a look at what we're expecting today. Um, we are tracking a few spotty showers early this morning, uh, but overall pretty quiet for now. The most of the rainfall activity will actually arrive later this afternoon from the west. So we're tracking a cooler, well, in fact, a mild start for now, but in a cooler afternoon with high temperatures barely reaching the low 70s. So it's going to be a cooler August day uh, with uh, rain showers again arriving this afternoon. Thankfully, of course, nothing is expected to be severe. Uh, but following today, we'll see a nice weather pattern in store for us tomorrow. Uh, but overall, we're going to keep a close eye on what's left of Tropical Storm Debbie and where it heads in our direction in that forecast straight ahead. Gary? Eric, thanks. Well, Eric, as Eric mentioned, we did see some damage here locally. Parts of Madison County took the brunt of the damage here in our area. These pictures are from the village of Hamilton. Multiple reports of trees down around the village, including on the campus of Colgate University. And in Sequoia, Pinnacle Road was closed for a short time last night after lightning struck the railroad crossing, causing it to short out and close, blocking that busy roadway. The crossing was quickly fixed around 10 last night, and the road was reopened. 
A Rome business is celebrating 40 years by giving back to the community that made it so successful. Chris Tech donated $5,000 and two refrigerators to the Salvation Army of Rome. The company is also collecting food and clothing for victims of last month's tornado. They can be dropped off at the company's headquarters. That's at 80 Otis Drive in the Griffiths Industrial Park, and you can do so until August 9th. A Rome man is accused. The WKTV Tower Cam is brought to you by the Central Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Good morning. Welcome back. It is 611. It's time now to show our Munson commute cast to get you set to head out the door this morning. First off, a live look along the arterial, looking into the eastern sky. No sunrise this morning like we saw yesterday. Uh, it's a bit cloudy to start out your day and this will be a common sight for most this morning, this afternoon, and this evening. Uh, with our traffic tracker reporting nothing in terms of road closures or accidents at this point due to the weather. Just a heads up that there was ponding on roadways yesterday. There could be still some ponding in low-lying areas early this morning. Uh, but for those of you who are interested in any uh, road work closures or road work uh, flagging one lane in either direction. You can head to the website WKTV.com. We do have a post with all uh, of the road work being planned in the Mohawk Valley area. But again, back to the weather today. We're starting out mostly cloudy, damp temperatures in the 60s. Climbing into the 70s, only low 70s by this afternoon. So again, not warming up by much with scattered rain showers developing. Nothing is expected to turn severe today, uh, but following today we'll see nice weather, plus we'll track what's left of Tropical Storm Debbie and that forecast straight ahead. Gary? Eric, thanks. In Paris, they weren't all... From Central New York's most dependable weather team, here's meteorologist Eric Gage. Good morning. Welcome back, everyone. This Tuesday is starting out a little damp. Uh, but the rain showers have tapered off for most of us. It will return again, though, by the afternoon. Before that, though, I want to recap because we did show earlier on the tornado damage in Buffalo, which was an EF1. It occurred in the uh, last few minutes of the 12 o'clock hour yesterday. And so with the August tornado now in the books, the West Winfield tornado in the books for June, and that very unusual February tornado down in the Binghamton area, that brings our tornado count for 2024 up to a record-breaking 26. So we set records for July, we set records for uh, just a day in general, and then we set a record for just a year in general. And the summer's not over with just yet. It's been a very busy uh, stretch of weather for all of us here in the New York State area. Regarding rainfall overnight last night into early this morning, notice some spots seeing a whole lot more of rain compared to others, some uh, up near two inches uh, in the Springfield area and north, but other spots barely a trace, 0.03 inches of rain in Woodgate. So very isolated downpours yesterday. There was some flooding concerns in the Sequoia area and areas out in the southern portion of Herkimer County into the Mohawk Valley. Uh, but for now, flooding risk is done with temporarily, but we will see more rain showers later today. Thankfully, nothing expected to turn severe. Downtown Utica right now, it's cloudy. Roads are drying up. Temperatures in the upper 60s. Still very humid out, but that humidity will uh, drop as we head throughout uh, tonight into tomorrow. That cold front we mentioned that will drop the humidity today is a bit more stubborn and taking a bit longer to move through the region. So you can see here, dry for now, but again, a few spotty showers here and there and a better shot for rain later today. But you can see here, humidity dropping tomorrow and Thursday and then returning again on Friday. And that's due to what's left of Tropical Storm Debbie. This is going to hook out into the Atlantic, produce lots of heavy rainfall, and then hook back inland. And the remnants of it, which will be at that point a post-tropical depression, will shift north, and that could influence rain showers here locally. And so, our sky cast, a few spotty showers this morning, better shot for rain this evening. Nothing is expected to be severe. Tomorrow, 
Cloudy start south, sunny start north. Sunshine by the afternoon, a dry day for pretty much all the area. Uh, but enjoy it because we head into Thursday. It starts out dry and sunny, and then we'll start to see rain begin to develop by the afternoon and evening. This is what's left, of course, of Tropical Storm Debbie. We're not expecting any winds with this, strong winds, but again, the moisture is there. The rain showers will be there, and this will continue into Friday, Saturday. And potentially Sunday. We'll, of course, keep a close eye on the exact track of it, uh, but for now, it looks to be a bit of a rainy one for the second half of the week. Gary? Eric, thank you. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on. Now, the news with Gary Libertor and meteorologist Eric Gage. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this half hour. I'm Gary Libertor. And I'm Storm Tracker 2 meteorologist Eric Gage. And boy, that damage out in Buffalo, a tornado right through downtown Buffalo, and you found the video. Yeah, right through the Lake Erie, right into the Buffalo area. Wow. EF1, 90 mile per hour winds, and just enough to uh, rip off some shingles on roofs, knock over trees. Proof to produce debris like this, even flip cars over. Very messy situation out in Western New York. Luckily for us, just some minor damage. Yes, minor damage, minor flooding. Thankfully, nothing as severe as this. But let's take a look at the weather for today because we're not tracking anything in terms of severe weather, but it's not going to be dry either. We got a few spotty showers we're dealing with early this morning. We can track them right now with the Yorkville Battery Storm Tracker 2 live radar. They are arriving from the west. Uh, some spots weakening, other spots producing some slightly, or he slightly heavier uh, rain showers. But again, we're not tracking severe weather today. That looks to say all south of central New York. But out in western New York, you can see up near Toronto, that's our next shot of rain showers, which arrive later today. A cloudy start, temperatures in the 60s right now. But the thing is, it's not warming up by much. We're looking at high temperatures today only in the low 70s. Uh, so this will not feel like an early August day, a midsummer day, more so like uh, maybe early fall day, you know, <laughs> but uh, the humidity is still pretty high. So I guess we can't quite call it that just yet. But uh, rain chances continue to arrive. Uh, we'll talk about that. Plus, the nice weather tomorrow, and then what we could expect with the remnants of Tropical Storm Debbie in that forecast straight ahead. Gary? Eric, thanks. Well, Debbie reached Florida's Big Bend Monday morning as a Category 1 hurricane. As Eric mentioned, it has since been downgraded to a tropical storm, but it is expected to cause a lot more damage with flooding. As forecasters have warned, the storm could dump historic levels of rain on southern states. Reporter Christian Colon has more now from northern Florida. Hurricane Debbie made its way throughout the West Coast and northern Florida, dumping several inches of rain. A lot of trees down, a lot of debris, just a lot of flooding. The flooding, I think, is the worst part of it all. Low-lying homes and businesses now surrounded by water, like this boutique in Live Oak. Well, we've had close to 10, 12 inches of rain since last night, and uh, it comes out through the parking lot in the back back there, and then it comes down up underneath the, through the sewer park down through there. The wind forced trees to come down and crush power lines. Some lost power. Because they're so used to the AC and can't open the fridge, can't get into the food or anything. So you're, you got lucky and Waffle House was open. So he was able to go there to get something to eat. Emergency crews from Miami-Dade seen heading north to help out. Nearly 50 Miami-Dade fire rescue personnel brought boats and trucks reporting for duty to an area still recovering from last year's Hurricane Idalia. Idalia had more wind and came through fast, and this is just sitting on top of us, just dumping rain after, you know, sheets after sheets. And the storm has been deadly. Four people were killed, including a 13-year-old who died when a tree crushed his mobile home. In Live Oak, Christian Colon, NBC News. Well, five local companies have products vying for the title. Good morning and welcome back, everyone. We are showcasing our photo of the day on this Tuesday, and this one uh, was a great photo I've been holding off to show because uh, we've had so many great submissions, and I feel like I want to show this one on a day that's expected to be a bit on the rainy side. Uh, this one is a sunflower field taken in Hartwick, and look at the beautiful backdrop right there. To me, it, again, looks like one of those photos you can use as a background on your uh, computer. Uh, with that sunflower, the sunflower field, and if 
Uh, that somewhat colorful backdrop in the sky it looks to be like the twilight hours of sunset or sunrise. Thinking closer to sunset, I'm not sure if the sunflowers uh, close and open up during the daytime. Uh, I'm not quite that much of a flower expert, but if you want to submit a photo like this one, send a link right there on top of your screen, wktv.com slash weather slash pics to showcase any photo you deem worthy of showcasing the beauty of our area here in central New York. Well, the weather today starting out rather mild and damp with temperatures in the 60s, climbing only into the low 70s by this afternoon with a few scattered showers. Uh, thankfully, nothing expected to be severe like yesterday, but uh, we will track what's left of Tropical Storm Debbie in that forecast straight ahead. Gary? Eric, thanks. If you are someone who is into or wants to... The WKTV Tower Cam is brought to you by the Central Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. From Central New York's most dependable weather team, here's meteorologist Eric Gage. Good Tuesday morning, everyone. We are starting out with mostly cloudy skies, damp conditions, temperatures in the 60s. Uh, but we're not warming up by much today. It'll feel a lot more uh, not like a uh, early to mid-August day. Before we get to that, though, I want to recap the busy year of 2024. We mentioned a few weeks ago, in fact, maybe last week at the very latest, that uh, we set a record for the most July tornadoes in New York records. Uh, but how about adding to that list? We set the record for most New York tornadoes in a year, period on record. Uh, this one, uh, at least the EF1 tornado in Buffalo, uh, broke that, uh, which was 1992, the last time we saw this many tornadoes in a year. West Winfield in June and an area near Binghamton in February, believe it or not, as if this year wasn't just strange enough. So again, total count sitting at 26, record setting for this year. Very busy stretch, uh, that's for sure. Downtown Utica right now, it's cloudy, it's damp, roads have dried up a little bit, but some spots will still be seeing a few spotty showers early this morning. 68, mostly cloudy, still very humid though, uh, and that humidity will continue to drop by tomorrow. That cold front is still a little bit persistent. Rainfall totals and temperatures early this morning. We have 2.3 inches of rainfall in New Hartford. Localized rain here especially. 1.1 inches in Clinton. Trace amounts in Westdale. Uh, trace amounts up in Old Forge. And uh, Sean and Inlet reporting temperatures in the 60s uh, early this morning. 60s in the Southern Valleys. Trace amounts of rain in Sknevis. And just under a trace or just over a trace amount of rain reported in Hartwick. And a live look at the Yurtfo Battery Storm Tracker 2 live radar. Again, a few spotty showers early this morning, but we're not looking at anything in terms of widespread rainfall. Of course, that will change as we head into this afternoon. But again, recapping, you can see some of the narrow rainfall bands that fell yesterday, as well as some spots seeing barely anything. The rainfall was incredibly localized and did produce some localized flooding. But with that humidity today, that cold front sweeps through tonight. And it, the humidity drops for Wednesday and Thursday, rebounds though on Friday. And that's due to what's left of Tropical Storm Debbie, which will uh, stay out in the Atlantic along the coast of South Carolina temporarily. And then as you head into Friday and Saturday, remnants of it will shift north and we'll see some of that moisture and rainfall with it. Thankfully though, nothing in terms of severe winds. So you can see right here, Rain showers arriving this afternoon uh, into this evening. We dry out tonight. A cloudy start south, sunny start north tomorrow. Then sunshine across the board. Rainfall will begin to arrive at the earliest Thursday afternoon and Thursday evening from, again, the remnants of Tropical Storm Debbie. And that will persist likely into Friday and Saturday. But as we get to that point, uh, we still have to track the exact path of Debbie because it's going to be encountering a trough and then shifting east. So uh, a bit more uncertain by the second half of the weekend, but still rain showers arrive Thursday and into Friday. Gary? Eric, thanks. A cotton candy colored crustacean is making.
Now, the news with Gary Libertor and meteorologist Eric Gage. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us here on the CW11. I'm Gary Libertor. And I'm Storm Tracker 2, meteorologist Eric Gage. And when you think of tornadoes, usually they're out in the more rural areas, but uh, you found some video from out in Buffalo right through downtown. Yes, right off of Lake Erie. Straight through, not quite the center of downtown, but right close to mm -hmm. it. Uh, and they surveyed it and determined it was an EF1. And just look at the damage here. We got uh, the tree uprooted right with that car in the background, a tree on top of a car, uh, and even cars flipped upside down. So a lot of very wow. strong winds. Uh, but here locally, what we did see was some tree damage, uh, nothing in terms of an EF1 tornado like. Uh, Buffalo, but the main concern last night was the flooding. Now, the rain showers have tapered off, giving the area creeks and streams a few moments to catch themselves up. Uh, in the meantime, uh, a few spotty showers moving through early this morning. A better shot for rain expected to arrive uh, by the mid afternoon. Now, a live look now at those current temperatures. We are sitting in the upper 60s at this point and will climb only into the low 70s by this afternoon. It will not feel like an early August day uh, with rain, still humid conditions, but the humidity drops tonight into the tomorrow. Uh, we'll enjoy the dry weather because we're tracking the arrival of the remnants of Tropical Storm Debbie in that forecast straight ahead. Gary? Eric, thanks. And as Eric mentioned, we did see some damage here locally. Parts of Madison County took the brunt of it. These pictures are from the village of Hamilton. Multiple reports of trees down around the village, including on the campus of Colgate University. And in Sequoia, Pinnacle Road was closed for a short time last night after lightning struck the railroad crossing, causing it to short out and close on Pinnacle Road, blocking that busy roadway. Crossing was quickly fixed, though, and around 10 o'clock last night, it reopened. A Rome business is celebrating 40 years in business by giving back to the community that made it successful. Chris Tech Wire donated $5,000 and two refrigerators to the Salvation Army of Rome on Monday. The company is also collecting food and clothing for victims of last month's tornado. They can be dropped off to the company's headquarters at 80 Otis Drive in the Griffiths Industrial Park until August 9th. A Rome man is accused of running around. While Debbie reached Florida's Big Bend Monday morning as a Category 1 hurricane, it has since been downgraded to a tropical storm, but is expected to cause a lot more damage with flooding, as forecasters have warned that the storm could dump historic levels of rain on southern states. Reporter Christian Colon has more now from northern Florida. Hurricane Debbie made its way throughout the west coast and northern Florida, dumping several inches of rain. A lot of trees down, a lot of debris, just a lot of flooding. The flooding, I think, is the worst part of it all. Low-lying homes and businesses now surrounded by water, like this boutique in Live Oak. Well, we've had close to 10, 12 inches of rain since last night, and uh, it comes out through the parking lot in the back back there, and then it comes down up underneath the, through the sewer part down through there. The wind forced trees to come down and crush power lines. Some lost power. Because they're so used to the AC and can't open the fridge, can't get into the food or anything. So you're, you got lucky and Waffle House was open. So we was able to go there to get something to eat. Emergency crews from Miami-Dade seen heading north to help out. Nearly 50 Miami-Dade fire rescue personnel brought boats and trucks reporting for duty to an area still recovering from last year's Hurricane Idalia. The Idalia had more wind and came through fast, and this is just sitting on top of us, just dumping rain after, you know, sheets after sheets. And the storm has been deadly. Four people were killed, including a 13-year-old who died when a tree crushed his mobile home. In Live Oak, Christian Colon, NBC News. Well, five local companies have... Pro From central New York's most dependable weather team, here's meteorologist Eric Gage. Good morning and welcome back. This Tuesday starts out a little damp, but those rain showers have tapered off temporarily. They'll return, though, as we head into this afternoon. Before we get to that, though, let's recap this active, not only month of July, but this year in general. Uh, we got that EF1 tornado confirmed in Buffalo yesterday, which sets the total 
for this year at 26, which broke the record of 25 set back uh, in 1992. Uh, on top of that, with the, all the red tornado icons indicating July tornadoes, we had one in June, that West Winfield tornado, and then surprisingly, one in February down in the Binghamton area. That was a bit of a shocker. So add that to the already very strange weather this year. But to the forecast, a live look at downtown Utica. Quiet and dry early this morning, at least in the downtown area. Uh, but again, we're still tracking a few spotty showers. Uh, regarding the temperatures and rainfall totals early this morning, Mike in New Hartford checked in with two weather stations, but the average was around 2.3 inches of rain. A uh, very narrow band of heavy rainfall passed through the area uh, overnight. 1.1 inches with Bob and Clinton, trace amounts of rain with Todd out in Westdale. Uh, Bill and Old Forge, the trace amount of rain. Sean and Inlet checking in with 61 degrees. Again, temperatures starting out in the 60s this morning. 66 Edmiston, 65 Cooperstown, and 66 in Milford. And still trace to just over a trace amount of rainfall with Gary, or with, uh, yeah, with Gary and, uh, and Stevis and uh, Deb in Hartwick. But a live look at the Yorkville Battery Storm Tracker 2 live radar. A few spotty showers here and there. Uh, we'll dry out a little bit, but then we'll see rain develop by the afternoon. This cold front we were expecting today is a little bit on the delayed side, meaning that we're going to be waiting until tomorrow for that lower humidity to completely arrive. Uh, but it will stick around for Thursday before humidity makes its return again on Friday. Uh, and the reason why is because we'll be seeing the remnants of Tropical Storm Debbie, which will be pushing out in the Atlantic, producing a lot of rain along the coast of South Carolina, then hooking back inland and then shifting north. The remnants, which will be called a post-tropical depression, will reach our area uh, here at the very earliest uh, Thursday afternoon. And so, on our SkyCast, to start... This morning, a few spotty showers. This afternoon, a better shot for scattered to widespread rain. Uh, highs today only in the uh, low 70s. So it will not feel like a typical July day, but, or typical August day, I should say. But as we head into tomorrow, we'll see morning clouds south, morning sun north, regardless afternoon sunshine across the board with temperatures in the mid to upper 70s and low humidity. You've got a beautiful day on tap tomorrow. Get out and enjoy it because following tomorrow, uh, as we end to Thursday, it's a dry start, but then we'll start to see the potential for rain showers arriving at the earliest uh, Thursday evening into Thursday night and especially into Friday. And so a look at your seven-day forecast. Following today, sunshine on Wednesday, Rain showers begin to arrive for the remnants of Debbie by Thursday and Friday. Still, temperatures remain in the 70s. We're not looking at 80 degree temperatures for the near future. If we do reach 80s, it'll be low 80s. Uh, and even then, the humidity will rise by Saturday, but still, it looks to be on the cooler side, remaining in the mid 70s throughout the weekend. Join Chief Meteorologist Bill Cardin. This on that Storm Tracker 2 Skycast, as you can see. Samantha Wissing. Severe weather all out. Meteorologist Jill Real. The conditions in place and right now. You can meteorologist see. Eric Gage. To get instant updates on floods, storms, and tornadoes. News Channel 2 Storm Tracker. Tracking storms minute by minute to keep your family safe. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Tropical Storm Debbie may have lost a little bit of strength, but still dropping some heavy rain as it makes its way north. Could have a significant impact on our weather end of the week. Chief Meteorologist Bill Cardis calling for an alert day on Friday. Yes, and we are watching Debbie. Uh, this is expected to head up the east coast and would give us some pretty heavy rainfall. I know the last tropical system brought us tornadoes, but this is a different setup. Uh, mm -hmm. This storm heading to our east is more favorable for that heavy rain, that more typical tropical heavy rain that we uh, get here with these 
types of systems moving up the Atlantic. So again, we've got a, uh, an alert day here for Friday as well as Friday night for the possibility of heavy rain. It is too early to say exactly how much rain and what our uh, likelihood for flooding is, but it's, the possibility is there given the, the data at this hour, and we're going to continue to keep you posted. Seeing some light rain out there tonight. So I look at the Yorko Battery Storm Tracker 2 Doppler radar. That is moving out. Moving in, some cooler, drier air. Our current temperature at Griffiths is 64. Uh, some patchy fog is possible tonight. A much more comfortable sleeping night. Temperatures drop into the upper 50s. You can open up the windows and cool off the house. We've got some beautiful weather ahead, at least until Debbie arrives. Look at the forecast is coming up. Jason, back to you. Bill, thank you. Heavy rains and flooding. Debbie has been downgraded to a tropical storm as it moves up the East Coast, yet still providing its powerful torrential rainfall. Brian Abel brings us the latest now from South Carolina. Tropical storm Debbie is once again churning in the warm ocean water of the Atlantic, expected to re-strengthen just a few dozen miles off the coast. First hitting Florida, Debbie is forecast to strengthen, turn, and make a second landfall in South Carolina later this week. We were preparing for that, that kind of heavy rainfall and the danger that comes with that kind of flooding. Officials already report at least five deaths across two states due to Debbie. We strongly advise residents to stay off the roads if at all possible. Even communities that escaped a direct hit earlier this week are reeling from torrential rain and immense flooding, including in Sarasota, Florida. We definitely saw you know, very high water rise very quickly there, uh, and we are bracing for more. More than 17 inches of rain fell, causing the city's wettest three-day period on record, with water all the way up to rooftops in some places. The storm is expected to head back toward land come Thursday and then sweep up the East Coast. This storm isn't over yet, so we urge everyone in its path to remain vigilant. While all eyes are on Debbie, that tropical storm could be just an appetizer of what's to come. Colorado State University forecasters are calling for an abnormally active August in the Atlantic, with an 85% chance of above normal hurricane activity through the 19th. In South Carolina, I'm Brian Abel. Now, Governor Hochul is asking New Yorkers to take the storm threat seriously and start preparing now. Later this week, the storm's set to bring rain to New York State, but it could pick up speed as it enters the Northeast. This is our new normal because of climate change. And as the leader of the state, it's all about being prepared in advance with the early warning systems we have. This is something to be taken seriously. Do not wait until the hurricane remnants come. This is about to start today. Debbie made landfall as a current uh, category one hurricane yesterday in Florida. For dropping to a tropical storm. We have some sad news to pass along tonight. Rome Rescue Mission Executive Director Matt Miller has died. Miller has helped hundreds and hundreds of people over his decades of work at the mission. He believed in their motto, a hand up, not a handout. And he did all he could to build a welcoming and healing culture there, from food programs to shelter and transitional housing and so much more. Miller oversaw it all until the day he passed. I reached out to Roe Mayor Jeffrey Lanigan, and he said, we are deeply saddened by the passing of Matt Miller. Quote, Matt's unwavering commitment and compassionate leadership have profoundly impacted countless lives, providing hope and support to those in need. His tireless efforts and selfless service will be remembered and cherished by our community. Our thoughts and prayers are with his family and loved ones during this difficult time. Now, funeral services have not been announced yet. Matt Miller was 63 years old. Our deepest sympathies go out to Matt's family and the Rome community tonight. Four people from Boonville, including a five-year-old, were rescued from the Black River over the weekend. The State Department of Environmental Conservation says they fell out of their kayaks on Saturday about a mile from the Lions Falls boat launch in Lewis County. A motorboat operator helped them get into the boat, and forest rangers in an airboat brought them to a waiting ambulance. A home health the WKTV Tower Cam is brought to you by the Central Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. From Central New York's most dependable weather team, here's Chief Meteorologist Bill Curtis. Good evening. This is a live look at our Yorkville Battery Storm Tracker 2 Doppler radar. We're tracking the back edge of some light rain continuing to move through our area. 
Uh, this will be departing central New York over the next couple of hours, and we will get a chance to dry out. Watch out for some patchy fog overnight as well as first thing tomorrow morning. Our current temperature in downtown Utica is 62 to wet, soggy degrees. The rain today has been relatively light. Dew point numbers have come down. It's becoming less humid and cooler. And it is a nice and welcome change compared to what we were dealing with here for most of the summer. It's been a very hot, humid summer, but it does look like the weather patterns will give us a break from that, uh, at least over the next several days. The bigger picture shows a cold front drifting to the south, producing some strong weather to our south, flooding strong thunderstorms across Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and downstate New York from this weather system that we were dealing with yesterday. Uh, this is going to continue to drift to the south and depart the region. We're also keeping an eye on what's now the remnants of what was once Hurricane Debbie. You can still see the circulation here. This storm sits in the southeast for a couple of days before working its way north. Tonight, partly cloudy skies. Watch out for patchy fog. We'll see sunshine on Wednesday. Temperatures climb into the upper 70s. It should be a beautiful day with a light breeze. Tomorrow night, mostly clear skies. Overnight lows drop into the 50s. On Thursday, clouds start to approach our area from the south, and we could see a few late rain showers late in the day with high temperatures in the 70s. Tropical Storm Debbie is expected to make a run into the northeast, and it is likely going to bring us some locally heavy rain. The track of this is still uncertain, but it's becoming more certain than yesterday that it's going to impact our weather here in the northeast. This is a, the bigger picture as we head into Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. The storm is expected to lift north and produce some heavy rainfall in our area as we head into Friday, as well as Friday night. Some showers here tonight, low temperature of 57. Again, watch out for patchy fog as we head into tomorrow. Uh, lots of sunshine tomorrow afternoon, a high temperature of 79. Again, a beautiful day ahead. Storm Tracker 2, seven day forecast. Some showers arrive Thursday, 78. We've got that alert day on Friday. Again, the leftovers of Debbie could potentially bring us heavy rain. It's early to, to put out amounts, but we're talking in the order of inches here, a few inches of rainfall. Uh, Saturday, this weather system will be moving out, wet in the morning, drying out in the afternoon, and then just a few lingering showers, lighter rain showers here as some cooler weather arrives Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And looking ahead, earlier tonight you had said, that humidity is coming back along with Debbie. Debbie's bringing back some humidity, yeah. Right. So we, we get a little bit of a break and then it's back again. All right, sounds yeah. good. Thank you, Bill. Coming up next, the Mohawk Valley Region News with Jason Palace. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Tropical Storm Debbie may have lost a little bit of strength, but is still dropping heavy rain as it makes its way north and could have a significant impact on our weather. Correct, Bill? Yes, we are keeping a close eye on this. Uh, all computer models and guidance say that it makes a run up the East Coast, and because we're dealing with a large storm, there's a pretty high confidence that we're going to be dealing with heavy rainfall in the Northeast as we head into Friday and Friday night. So we're putting out the alert day yeah. uh, for the possibility of some heavy rainfall. Again, timing Friday into Friday night. In terms of amount, it's early to try to pin this down, but we're thinking at least a few inches of rain here. Uh, but we will keep you posted on that. Obviously, that has a lot to do with the track of the storm, which isn't set in stone, and it will take a little bit of time to figure that, uh, that out. Tonight, a few light rain showers not related to Debbie. These are part of a cold front that is continuing to move through central New York. We've been noticing a drop in the humidity, a drop in the temperature. We're sitting at 63 degrees. Feels on the cooler side, and heading into tonight, you can... Leave the windows open. Cool off the house. Overnight lows drop down into the upper 50s. A beautiful day tomorrow. And then we're tracking Debbie and how that affects our weather heading into the weekend. That's coming up. Jason, back to you. Okay, Bill, thank you. Heavy rains and flooding. Debbie has been downgraded to a tropical storm as it moves up the East Coast. Yet, still a lot of heavy rain going through those areas. Torrential rainfall. Brian Abel brings us the latest from South Carolina tonight. Tropical Storm Debbie is once again churning in the warm ocean water of the Atlantic, expected to re-strengthen just a few dozen miles off the coast. First hitting Florida, Debbie is forecast to strengthen, turn, 
and make a second landfall in South Carolina later this week. We were preparing for that, that kind of heavy rainfall and the danger that comes with that kind of flooding. Officials already report at least five deaths across two states due to Debbie. We strongly advise residents to stay off the roads if at all possible. Even communities that escaped a direct hit earlier this week are reeling from torrential rain and immense flooding, including in Sarasota, Florida. We definitely saw you know, very high water rise very quickly there, uh, and we are bracing for more. More than 17 inches of rain fell, causing the city's wettest three-day period on record, with water all the way up to rooftops in some places. The storm is expected to head back toward land come Thursday and then sweep up the East Coast. This storm isn't over yet, so we urge everyone in its path to remain vigilant. While all eyes are on Debbie, that tropical storm could be just an appetizer of what's to come. Colorado State University forecasters are calling for an abnormally active August in the Atlantic, with an 85% chance of above normal hurricane activity through the 19th. In South Carolina, I'm Brian Abel. Now, Governor Hochul asking New Yorkers to take the storm threat seriously and start preparing now. Later this week, it will bring rain, but it could pick up speed as it enters the Northeast. This is our new normal because of climate change. And as the leader of this state, it's all about being prepared in advance with the early warning systems we have. This is something to be taken seriously. Do not wait until the hurricane remnants come. This is about to start today. Now, Debbie made landfall as a Category 1 hurricane yesterday in Florida before dropping tro to tropical storm levels. We have some sad news to pass along tonight. Rome Rescue Mission Executive Director Matt Miller has died. Miller has helped hundreds of people over his decades of work at the mission. He believed in their motto, a hand up, not a handout. And he did all he could to build a welcoming and healing culture there, from food programs to shelter and transitional housing and so much more. Miller oversaw it all until the day he passed. I reached out to Roe Mayor Jeff Lanigan, and he said we are deeply saddened by the passing of Miller. Quote, Matt's unwavering commitment and compassionate leadership have profoundly impacted countless lives, providing hope and support to those in need. His tireless efforts and selfless service will be remembered and cherished by our community. Our thoughts and prayers are with his family and loved ones during this difficult time. Funeral services have not been announced yet. Matt Miller was just 63 years old. Our deepest sympathies go out to Matt's family and the Rome community tonight. Four people from Boonville, including a five-year-old, were rescued from the Black River over the weekend. The State Department of Environmental Conservation tells us they fell out of their kayaks on Saturday about a mile from Lions Falls boat launch in Lewis County. Now, a motorboat operator helped them get into their boat, and forest rangers in an airboat brought them to a waiting ambulance. A home health aide is charged with... The WKTV Tower Cam is brought to you by the Central Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. From Central New York's most dependable weather team, here's Chief Meteorologist Bill Curtis. Good evening. We're taking a live look at the Yorkville Battery's Turn Tracker 2 Doppler radar. We've been dealing with some light rain throughout most of today. Uh, this is back edge of the rain is finally starting to push through our area so we will get a chance to dry out tonight. It is a damp 61 degrees in downtown Utica. I do expect to see some patchy fog develop overnight as skies start to clear out. We've been noticing a drop in the humidity, finally. Dew points are now in the 50s, and it is going to be a very comfortable day tomorrow uh, with high pressure returning. We've got high pressure that's going to help clear out the clouds and the rain showers this evening. Uh, so our Wednesday looks really nice. And we're also keeping an eye on Debbie. The leftovers of Debbie will be making their way up the East Coast which will have a pretty high impact on our local weather by Friday and Saturday. Storm Tracker 2 Skycast tonight. Again, getting a chance to dry out. Patchy fog. Be on the lookout for that. Overnight lows drop down to the upper 50s. It's beautiful Wednesday. We start out with a mix of sunshine and clouds. We'll see lots of sunshine in the afternoon. High temperatures will be in the mid to upper 70s. It's a very comfortable day. Comfortable tomorrow night. Overnight lows drop into the upper 50s. Heading into Thursday, we'll notice some clouds build in from the south and some rain is expected to develop late in the day with high temperatures in the mid-70s. Tracking Debbie, 
It's expected to make landfall again in South Carolina and then work its way up the East Coast. The timing of this looks to be Friday. Uh, the center of the storm working its way in late in the day, but the shield of rain is going to be around heading into most of Friday afternoon. This is 7 o'clock Friday. You can see the remnants of Debbie in Virginia lifting to the north and basically taking a direct aim into the northeast, uh, likely moving right across New York State with heavy rain as we head into Saturday. Some of the early projections produce at least three inches of rain across New York State. That's what this red color means. But again, this could shift west. This could shift east. We're hoping a shift to the east would lower the amounts of rain in upstate New York. But again, it's going to take a little bit more time to, to iron out the track here. And the bottom line is even a change in the track still looks like it's going to be a pretty heavy rainfall here by Friday and Friday night. Showers around 57 for the overnight low. Watch out for some patchy fog late. Beautiful day tomorrow. Sunshine 79. Storm Tracker 2 seven day forecast. Again, the alert day Friday for heavy rain possible. This is going to be around Friday night into very early Saturday, but we should get a chance to dry out Saturday afternoon. Just a few light showers here Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And cooler temperatures in the 70s during the day, 50s at night. Everyone's going to have Friday circled. Yes, we'll be keeping an eye on that. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Bill. Coming up next.